Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful painting of the California coast. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with a little bit of blue, white, and a touch of red. The red just helps to make the blue not so crazy. A lot of white. Okay, let's just paint a normal sky. And of course, you guys know how to do this. We got the standard masking tape. I've got a little pencil sketch instead of sketching, you know, right now with the paint, which you could do, which normally I would. I just wanted to kind of get myself going a little quicker this morning. So, I don't know, yesterday I just felt like putting a sketch on the canvas, which I did. You guys could just as easily do it with a filbert brush and a little bit of paint right now. I wanted to get this a little more accurate, I guess, because it's a real place. It's the Ventura Beach area. And actually this is a, a painting idea taken from a video that Sophie shot and then I actually just freeze framed it, grabbed, a, grabbed the picture, made just a tiny, tiny bit of modifications to it, change a little bit of the angle of the waves, add a little more splash, but other than that, it's really pretty much exactly the same. So I wanted to paint it slightly more accurately. Now I'm just finishing up here, kind of painting in the background. I pulled the tape and I very carefully kind of cut across and then once I had that line cut in straight, you know, like we always do, then I, I just blended it a little bit. So, I don't know, it feels a little softer. Maybe that's not totally natural, you know, normally it's really is pretty harsh and, and straight, but hey, you know, I think, I think it looks a little more artistic. I, I feel like it leads the eye into the background a little better. All right, well, now that all that's out of the way, I've got a green color I also mixed up over here. I'm actually gonna take a little bit of our ocean color, which is that, and I'm gonna stick it in there. There, looks good to me. Now I'm just gonna scrub this in. It creates a little bit of a suggestion of a wave or something right here. Slide that up and back like that. That's kind of a, a nice little wave that'll help to kind of frame in the painting on that side. That works. Add a little light to it, but not a lot of light. Only a little bit here and there. Good, and then take some of that green and you know the rules with seascapes, you have to spread it around. You have green in the background, you have green in the, in the foreground and in the eye of the wave and everywhere else. Same with the blue. So, you know, if you have blue in the background, you have to have blue even up there in the foreground. It's just the way you have to paint seascapes. There, not too much though, not in the background. As you come closer, you can start to see a lot more green. Helps it look a little better that way. Creates some automatic depth for you. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in our little eye of the wave here which is kind of standard. There, I'm just gonna scrub it in like we usually do. And you can see my color over here. You see, I played with the color quite a bit to get a, you know, the exact color that I wanted. Because again, I'm, I'm matching that beautiful Pacific green color. There, actually a little more blue would be nice. As we come down, just so that it gets a little darker, there. It's important though that you get a lot of variation in color happening here. Put a little black in it. See those variations? Oh yeah, those are good. And then maybe a little white and a little yellow. Watch this little white yellow. Bring their yellow ochre into the mix. See what that does for us. Yes. And then we'll drag that right into the blue. I just painted some blue down here. See that? And then just let it Go way down, like that, and then back up. Lots of green here. We can add a little more highlight to the eye of the wave, but I really want to get this feeling of green and all throughout this area. All up and through here, a little more than normal, just because that's the way it was when we were there. All right, let's take a break from the ocean for just two seconds here and paint in some rocks. Now let me show you my color. This is kind of color number one over here and color number two over here. The, the thing is, my thought is that possibly we should paint in these rocks. Some of them a little lighter, some that are eh, a little darker. The reason is, depending on how, how bright I want the final product to be, you know, I wouldn't want to necessarily just go jet black everywhere because I think that would be kind of annoying to cover be very difficult. So instead, hey, you can do it. It's fine. But instead, I think I'm going to do just do a little more pre-planning. And every once in a while, kind of give myself a lighter rock and a darker rock. And even different faces of the rock can be different values. Now, the light is a little interesting. It's kind of coming 
from this angle, kind of low and straight on, but not quite straight on. The rocks kind of, it's very difficult to see it on the ocean wave, but the rocks kind of show where the, show where the light's coming from. See that? So it's a, a little more straight on than normal, but still, you know, there's still a wonderful amount of contrast and, and different shading angles. And yeah, it's not like flat or anything, but just a little different than normal. So it gives you a bit of a thought. And so you see how that rock is kind of already set up for the highlight? That's good. I think that's probably what we should be doing. So anyway, that's, that's my thought. It might take an extra three minutes, but three minutes well spent. <laughs> there we go. Next, I'm going to go ahead and underpaint our sand. It actually looks like I've missed a rock here. Hold on, let me throw that in. Just use the corner of the fan brush. This is my dark brush, actually, that I was using. There it is, okay. This one I kind of just wiped out on a paper towel. I haven't gotten my one for light dirty yet. I like to work with two or three of each. Right now, I'm only two. That's what I have. I should have three. I don't know why I only have two. <laughs> but anyways, one for light, one for dark, and usually one more just to have on hand. I find very useful, but anyway, that's going to be a little bit of a rock there. So I'm trying to underpaint the sand pretty quickly here, using variation of colors, all kind of in the tan sandy colors, of course, very, very simple. Take a little more of this. See, that's my pile of color right there. Maybe just, just throw a little bit more right in here. And I did plan to put some water in the lower right hand area, but I'm going to go ahead and underpaint sand under that anyway, because, because this water is so shallow, there's no blue reflecting from it. It's just simply white foam and the sand underneath. They'll make it look very realistic. Lots of color variation. Now with a clean filbert, I'm going to lay on a lot of foam. And this foam is fairly light. I guess I'm, I'm working on trying to get some contrast in here. And I like the light foam against the green. It also helps with the lighting situation, although it's just a little different than normal. And so that kind of, I don't know, kind of, we get less shading in here, which is fine. You just don't want to go flat. So as long as it doesn't get flat, and I'm just going to be very, very careful about making sure that it doesn't get flat, you know, doesn't, doesn't look weird, doesn't look kind of boring. The way I'll kind of monitor that is once I put the highlight on, if it feels like there's not enough contrast, I'll go back in and I'll pop in my, my foam shadow, which is what we're painting right now, a little darker. There we go. Nice. Then of course you want to do a, a, a reflection right there. Actually, we should probably be pulling down before we pull across. It tends to make a softer water look, leaving a little bit of dark still, because we're going to want to put a little line, line of dark there. Good. All right, so I'm just going to continue with this. Again, not going overboard, maybe just a little more, a little darker as we go out here toward the, toward the edge. Now I'm just finishing up here, adding in a little bit of a ripple, and we kind of were planning this from the beginning. This is very easy. You just toss it right in. I also added a little highlight here. I felt like it just needs to be a little brighter. I did that after, after I started working on that because, you know, then this looked bright and that was dark. So you kind of have to do things like that as you paint. Now, let's go up here and think about this wave. I kind of like the softness of it, so maybe we won't go too crazy, but I think now's about the right time to just get in here and I've got my little detail round and I'm just going to softly highlight this thing. Not anything too bright, just enough. See that? It just brings out a little light on it. Not, not, not so much that it's just annoying. There we go. Remember that light source is kind of from this angle, but more straight on. You got to think about that as you paint. Very important. Maybe right here, we could afford to do a little. There, I'm gonna go kind of slowly because this is a little different lighting situation. It's not like you just slam it on everywhere. There, and I'll step back and make sure I like where we're going before I go too far. That would be a good idea. 
This spot right up here should be nice and light. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on a bit of a splash here, kind of in the foreground. And this actually was not part of the original scene. It was a, a later wave that I'm sticking here because I think it would look good. So sometimes you can do that. You don't have to stick to an idea perfectly. You kind of change it up as you go along, which is what I do a lot. There. Now obviously the more paint you put on, the worse this looks, so you gotta make sure that you put it on pretty sparingly. Now I've went ahead and added another highlight here to the rocks, but I'm gonna add my third highlight. That is if you, you kind of count the first highlight as maybe being, you know, when we blocked him in, how we kind of did the light and dark. So this would be kind of highlight number three. There. This is our little accent highlight that just makes them look wet because they're so reflective now. See that? You want it to be nice and nice and bright. It's just nice. I, I, I like these. I like these kind of highlights. I just feel like they really add a little something to the painting. You don't want to do it everywhere, but you want to kind of concentrate the light more in the middle, picking out little areas that you think would catch light and add to the overall composition. You don't want to just look for areas that'll catch light, but maybe be distracting. You know, there's, here's an example. I wouldn't want to put this light over here in the corner because you'd go whoop, over to the corner. Instead, I want you to go right to the middle. Speaking of the middle, there's one. Not too much, and you kind of want to do these where you already have highlight. You wouldn't want to just plunk one in the shadow. That would be a little weird. There. There's a little. There's a little. Nice. And then over here, this whole rock, let's just Line that rock there. Good. This is the way you help to refine your painting, make it look a lot better. Actually, we could do kind of a different angle there. This rock here needed a little more shaping, so we can shape it with this as well as the brush gets dirty. See that drag down to kind of shape it and make it maybe look not quite so harsh. I don't know. I'll take a look at it from back there, but you guys have a better view than I do. When you're painting at home, stand back about six feet away in order to really see your painting without, you know, I mean, up close you can't see it very well. So without, without stepping back, it's going to be a little hard to figure out what's going on. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of a reflected light with a little bit of blue and white. There, that's going to just help to make it look a little more realistic. You see, this is where it's being lit by the sky. There. Okay, that looks good. And so you don't do it to everyone, but you certainly do it to a lot of them. Enough to make it feel just a little bit more part of the scene. You know the rules. If you put blue in the background, you put it in the foreground. There. And this is just, just a really good way to make, make the whole painting tie together with color. Plus it's real. I've actually seen artists do this before that I actually saw it or noticed it. I'm sure I've seen it before I've noticed it in real life, but then I did notice it in real life. And sure enough, I think it was a tree or something. It had blue wrapping around the other side. It's really cool. There. Now let's head back to the, the background here and work on, work on some highlight. Not a lot, just a, a normal little bit, <laughs> not, not anything crazy. And obviously, just like the entire painting here, especially because there's not, you know, when I, when I normally do a wave, it's like hitting against a rock and really splashing up. And that helps like keep, you know, a frame in the painting, in the, in the composition, but not so much here, mostly because it's a real place and I really didn't want to deviate much. So, having said that, instead what we're going to do is just create a little bit of We'll focus in the middle with, with the light, you know, and I've talked about that a minute ago, so. It's just, just more of the same stuff. I'm trying to keep the light in the middle, trying to keep the viewer focused here. It's all good. <laughs> there, a little bit right here. Try not to cover up too much of your green. You can always put your green back in. There, 
Again, not too much out here, even though there's a little bit of a wave coming. Let's keep it a little darker. There, a little more blue maybe. Yeah, we should actually get a little more dark blue out here. There, that's pretty. And just work right back. This detail round brush is so soft that you can layer paint over here and really not have a lot of mixing, which is good. Now we'll finish up this painting like we do most all of our seascapes. I've got a little bit of thin down white on my fan brush and I just flick it on with the palette knife. Just that simple. There, that looks good. So you just do this a little, step back, take a look, and you wanna practice on your palette. Definitely wanna practice on your palette to make sure you get the, the right size bubble. There, some of it can kinda of shoot up, that's kinda of cool. You notice I actually lowered, remember we had that big mass, I actually lowered it down so that I would have room to do this. I did that a while ago, I don't remember if I told you or not, probably didn't. <laughs> there, sometimes I, I just do things and I forget. Now there's a little bit right here. You want to be careful not to get this everywhere. And see, you don't really want it in the darks. So I'll erase those areas that are in the darks. You can do that very easily just by touching with any brush. Doesn't even have to paint on it. There, maybe a little touch right there. That looks good. See how that softens that area? Really makes it nice. This is how you kind of finish up a seascape. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.